All right, welcome to another episode of Kiwi Skane Stories, where neighbors meet neighbors. Today we have Karen Bieber Fudernik. She is a longtime Kiwi Skane resident with 27 years. We should we should be uh, giving out badges. That's right. Like in, like in companies, <laughs> in companies they give you a pin. You know, whenever that's you're. Right. That's <laughs> right. I want to. I'm waiting till I get the watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I like that. The watch. Um, she is with her daughter. She's a co-founder of Write by Me, which is pretty cool. It is an online text editor and supporting website that eliminates implicit gender bias in written communications. Mm. Right. Yes. Um, Karen, thank you so much for joining us on the show. How are you? Great. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. This is exciting. We, you and I have talked many times yes. on, on many issues because you're also very involved in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, but this project is also pretty cool. So I have, a, I have a question for you before we begin. What is the best piece of advice you have ever been given? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, actually, I'm gonna, there are three. Perfect. There are three. Um, I think the first one that, that's most important is be kind. You know, be kind. Kindness is something that um, seems to be less apparent and less valued in life and, and you know, every day. And I think be, be kind is, is one of the most important things that I was advised. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, the second one is never panic. Um, mm. Never panic because you lose your ability to think clearly. So the time to panic could be after, Right everything is said and done, then you can panic. But in the middle of any situation, never panic. And um, I've passed that on to my kids who have used it. So yes, so never panic. The third one, really interesting. I, I, I heard in passing from a woman who don't know her name. And I don't think I saw her once. And I don't think I'll ever see her again. And I heard her say, Oh, you'd be very surprised what you can do. And I thought, wow, yeah, so. I like them. Those are like three. It, it makes no sense. particular order. No, no, awesome, yeah. awesome. Thank you. I like the no panic one. I like them all, but the no panic makes sense because yeah. we can't think. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So right by me, I'm yes. excited. I'm excited because it's very interesting. So as I read in the description, it you know eliminates implicit gender bias. I think to kind of like set the groundwork of mm. what that means. Can you explain that for us? Sure. So implicit bias is a form of bias that automatic and unintentionally affects our beliefs, our judgments, and really organizes the world as we see it. So it affects our judgments. It affects our decision making. Uh, but it's something of which we're not even aware. In open discussion, if you ask somebody, trying even to hide the questions that might address any sort of bias, people are very, very defensive and say, absolutely not, I'm not biased, blah, blah, blah. But when we get into the research and we really dig down, these are implicit biases or beliefs we have about how the world should be organized that, that start in the playground. Year after, day after day, month after month, year after year, you're believing how things should be. So it's really, really hard to break through those implicit biases. And, um, with Right By Me, what we've done is we've, we, we've looked to science, we've looked to data, we've looked to academic research, and we have really created a platform, a text editor, that is a complete rethink as to how we are trying to break through that implicit bias. And um, I have your website here pulled up and there's an example, which is great to start with as we were talking pre-podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to read this out mm -hmm. and then it right by me has corrections, you know, or at least it will point certain things out, but I'll, I'll read it out first. Mm -hmm. Hi, Chris. Sorry to bother you. I just wanted to ask you a question about tomorrow's meeting. Should we talk about business development? I am familiar with the competitive landscape. It would be good to start considering name ideas before we move to the next step. Does this make sense? Thank you so much, Susan. For me, it sounds like it's good. If, if somebody at work comes to me and says, is this a good email to send? I'll be like, yes, it's good to me. It's like, yeah. so, so, so what's wrong with that? So if I click here, <laughs> right. If I click here, it says, check my text. Mm -hmm. And now it lights up with different colors. Right. You know? It says, I, I want to, Okay, so one of the things here, for example, is 
hedges. He points out hedges. He points out extra polite. It says communal mm -hmm. apologies, questions, and qualifiers. You guys have to check this out. It's pretty cool. But so, what's wrong with this text? Sure. So. A text can be grammatically correct, can be written perfectly, and yet be very ineffective and very weak and not express the writer's authority on a subject, leadership, capabilities. Even though we may feel like, well, I feel very confident. I'm right. My, my writing is perfect, right? I feel like it's strong. Really what's important is how is that being understood by the reader, right? Because That's what's important, perception, right? How is the reader perceiving me as the writer through my writing, through my, my communication? The Write By Me text editor identifies weak and ineffective words and phrases. So how do we do that? Well, we've broken down the words and phrases into seven different categories. And if you go to the website, you can read the cat, you can see, I'll tell you the categories, but you can read more about them and why. Why is this word ineffective? Why is this phrase You know, why does this not express my authority on a subject? So the categories are hedges, mm -hmm. questions, apologies, communal writing, qualifiers, and being extra polite. So why should I care if my writing expresses my authority in a subject or my capabilities, my leadership? So in the business world, how, how I'm being perceived affects everything about how I'm being reviewed and my chances for upward mobility in the company. So we know that implicit gender bias holds women back. It is found in and across every institution, every organization, and every business. It's everywhere. And, and when my daughter and I were doing our research, I mean, I, my jaw was on the ground when I was reading about how pervasive this implicit gender bias is and how to hold women back. It's in law. It's in medicine. It's in politics, it's in aviation, it's, it's everywhere. Um, and we know that the way women communicate is very, very different from the way that men communicate. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just very, very, very different. Um, so we're trying to break through that. I mean, it's cool. I can identify already now that you're describing it because sometimes I'm extra polite. I sometimes do mm -hmm. that. Sometimes I thank you so much, mm -hmm. you know, and... Um, Not so much the apology part, but sometimes I'm like careful to ask things nicely mm. without having to be like too direct. Like I need this or please do this. Right, right. I'm more like, you know, could you possibly do this or something like that? So, you know, you, you can be very polite mm. and be direct and assertive in your communication, right? Because here's an example is on the website. Um, if I say, um, can you please pass me the pen? versus Alejandro, please pass me the pen. One is asking for permission. Can you mm. pass me the pen? They both result in my getting the pen. But one says, Alejandro, please pass me the pen. One says, can you pass me the pen? So really some of these things are very, very subtle, but yet can have a huge difference in the outcome insofar as how I am being perceived in my authority and leadership. So what was the inspiration behind this? How did it all start? Well, so when my daughter was studying in university, she majored in international relations and economics. And she became really mad <laughs> about how she saw, it was, it was women in politics specifically, and how women were being not just held back, but put into positions where they could not succeed. And actually, let me bring that home for a second. If you look across um, politics and businesses, right? When businesses are floundering, they're more likely to put a woman in leadership. What is floundering for those? They're not doing well. Something's okay. going wrong. They're having a problem, not for whatever reason, okay? They're going to put a oh, we put a woman in there. And then it's great because they have someone to blame <laughs> for it not succeeding. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I mean, and this is just, this is statistics. We're not making this up. Um, so she became really upset about what she saw in politics specifically about putting women in places, you know, in, in uh, elections, for example, where they knew the woman was never going to succeed, but they're going to put them there anyway. So she was venting to me one day. And then we started about, we started discussing 
um, communication. She sent me an email that she wanted to send to her landlord. And I took a look at it and all of these little like light bulbs started illuminating in my head based on just things that have, had come across my newsfeed about the way women talk. It was, it was, I had no particular interest. I just happened to read it. So we started discussing written communication. She and her roommate and her best friend started censoring each other's writings to be more direct, more assertive, right? Instead of more submissive and more communal, which is how women communicate. We want everybody to be nice, to be happy. There's no one-upsmanship, right? Mm. Versus the way a man typically writes, which puts him in a position of authority, right? Being the leader, the one you need to turn to, right? So anyway, she said to me in passing one day, oh, mommy, I wish there were just something I could enter my text into and say, okay, what would a man say? And that's how it began. That's, I mean, I feel like I use Grammarly. I'm right. sure you're familiar with Grammarly. Sure, of course. Uh, this would be a great addition to like Grammarly would correct my grammar. And then you uh, absolutely. Make, <laughs> and write by me can make sure that I'm writing a little more uh, better, more right. assertive. I'm not like being too, too, too super nice. I make sure I'm getting my po point across. Uh, and you know what? Correctly. Grammarly is phenomenal at what they do. And right by me, we're also phenomenal at what we do. So if anyone out there with Grammarly is listening, I would love to have the conversation. <laughs> well, I think it would be great. I think it would be great. Yeah. But awesome. So, and then now this is something you and your, your daughter are doing together. Yes. Yeah. It was an amazing journey. Um, just phenomenal. The timing worked out perfectly. Um, I reached out to someone very well known in the community who was very well connected in the tech world. And I said, hey, we have an idea. Gave her the basics. Um, who can I speak with about helping me build this? She gave me three names. And um, I contacted... Uh, all three, three men, two of whom I would never work with. <laughs> Good. <laughs> right. Because they just didn't get it. You know, they really didn't understand what we were trying to accomplish. Um, and then I spoke with Chris Stegner from Very Big Things. And um, Synergy was great, great connection. He got it. Um, you have to like, who, you know, the people you're working with. And I have to say the journey with, with the Very Big Things team was outstanding. So it was great. So I'm, I'm very proud of, of what we built. And Very Big Things, you said? Mm -hmm. For those that don't know, what are they? What do they do? How are they helping you? So they, they did everything. Um, we, they're Fort Lauderdale based um, with uh, development teams in different parts, in different places around the world. Um, they really can do anything. And for us, they, 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 worked on the naming, you know, how we got to the name right by me to, you know, the voice, the branding, the colors, the typeface, you know, what does this look like? Um, we did the, the, um, the user experience, right? What would that look like? You know, what was the interaction with the website? So we, we was really, um, soup to nuts. They did everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So basically they helped you start up the startup. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So where do you see this going? I mean, this is pretty cool. This is a startup, you know. How, how long has it been since you start, since you launched it, the website? About a year. About a year. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're starting up. Yeah. So where do you see this going? Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Um, so ideally, you know, really right by me. By the way, it's free. There's no charge. Uh, you know, it's available to everyone. And, and right by me is not only for women. I do want to make sure I say that. Right by me is for everyone. Because understanding the power of communication is so important, again, for, for business, for just your life, for getting someone to come to your house to take a look at, a, you know, a plumbing leak. So um, this, is for, this is written for everyone. And um, I don't want anyone to think that it's only for women because it's really not. Um, so I, I would love to see every company, large or small, from two employees to two million employees offering this to uh, within the company. Really, it's important. Uh, it, it's for so many reasons. Number one, of course, let's just take the economics of it. Data, again, when women are more represented in positions of authority in a company, the company does much better financially. That bottom line is healthier when women are more represented. In the United States, 
eight billion dollars a year is spent by businesses on trying to create more uh, equitable landscape, right? As far as you talk about diversity, but let's just talk about women, right? Mm. Women being represented, women being being valued. So mm. no, no, this is really important. What what's been going on in the past hasn't really worked because the needle hasn't been moved. And according to what's called the gender equity clock, it would take over 130 years for women, this is the pay gap, for women to reach um, equal pay. I don't want to wait that long. It's a long time. That's a long time, <laughs> right? And I, I, I have daughters, you know, God willing, I'm going to have granddaughters one day. Yeah, I need this to be better, yeah. right? Even if it's just, you know what? It's um, enlightened self-interest. <laughs> Enlightened self-interest. Enlightened self-interest. I want this to be better for my daughter and my sons, right? So anyway, so in business, businesses are healthier. Bottom line is healthier when women are, are more represented. When, when employees feel supported in the workplace, they stay. So your attrition rate is so much less, which means you're not spending money on recruiting new people, training new people. They're telling their good, capable friends about how wonderful a workplace it is. So there's a lot of reasons why this is important. So, you know, where, where do I see this? Really, I think every company should be offering this um, to uh, to the employees. That's where I'd like to see this. I like it. I think when I was doing some studies on, on this in, in school, I think the number one reason people stay you know, in their job is because mm -hmm. of the, not because of the pay, is because of the, the environment. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. Pay yeah. comes second. And people can only take, so they can take a high salary and abuse for a very <laughs> right. short time. That's right. Yeah. You know, you can't be, it's not a long lasting and good investment for the company at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. You mentioned this was free. Is there some sort of like monetization plan in mind for the future? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we will be going to a subscription based model um, based on the size of company. So it would be an enterprise. Um, we can and will tailor the support and the bucket of words to the industry, mm. right? Because the words, you know, the word, the language of different industries can be different. So we want to make sure that we are best supporting strong, effective writing within the industry for business. So we will be going to a, a subscription based model, but certainly, you know, for the individual, absolutely free and and the free version will be very robust um and it is very robust so I mean, yeah from what i'm seeing on your website definitely and i can see how the benefits of monetizing and, and focusing in the industry um because when i read the example and i said yeah i tend to be more like um friendly you know what was the word i use a more um extra polite mm -hmm. because I, in government, since I work for the elected mm -hmm. officials, we cannot tell the administration what to do. So it needs to be, I can't tell a director, do this right. for me, please. You know, I have to be like, can someone please look into mm -hmm. potentially doing this? Because I don't want to make it seem like it's a directive mm -hmm. because that's why, right. we, that's why we have the elected officials mm -hmm. and then we have the administration mm -hmm. and we have the commission. So the elected officials meet, they make decisions and then the they vote and then the administration goes forth and executes. Mm -hmm. So I cannot skip. Right. That's why, from what you're telling me, that's why I feel like I'm more, more extra polite. And, and well, you know, it's it's important, of course, to know your audience always. Mm -hmm. um, but I, but 100, percent you can be, you can speak well, you can be eloquent, you can write well, you can be grammatically correct, you can be polite, but you don't necessarily have to be ineffective and, and weak mm. in that expression. Yeah. A hundred percent. So pre-podcast, you were telling me about your hat. Um, it's a cool hat. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so tell me, tell me what's happening Thank with you. the hat. Yeah. So, um, this hat I got in Iceland. It's an Icelandic brand. He's a big fan of Iceland. Karen loves yes, Iceland. I do. I do. He's mm -hmm. getting me hooked. For many reasons, yeah. Phenomenal place. Um, as I've told you, mm -hmm. um, I took my kids there eight years ago. And then um, when it was good, I traveled with my daughter frequently, right? And when we were discussing where to go, Iceland came up again. And yeah. she loved it. All my, my, my two boys and my daughter, everyone loved Iceland. She wanted to go back. And even after my phenomenal eight days there, we'd still go back. So Iceland is 
recognized as being number one in the world for uh, gender equality. So for me, I was so excited that my daughter chose Iceland because, wow, now I have the chance to really dig deep into how did they get there? What are the challenges? Um, I had the fa fabulous opportunity to meet with some amazing women discussing Iceland's history and how they reached number one and what are their challenges. So um, I learned a lot. Uh, the women there are, uh, and the, really the, everybody, the women, I should say, the women and the men, very, very engaged. And just a side note, you know, in my um, starting right by me and reaching out to people in this field, right, in many ways, because this is very much is a social issue, it's a business issue, it's an economic issue, it's a, it's a psychology issue. There are lots of, you know, fingers in this pot. Um, I, I found that I've gotten really wonderful engagement from Iceland and Scandinavian countries. You know, it's been really fascinating. Um, some wonderful engagement here in the United States, but um, not as much as I was I was hoping for. Um, but I'm still at it. God, I have a hard head, so I don't take no for an answer. Do, have you been able to identify a reason why that is? Why are you getting more? Why you feel like you're getting a lot more support over there? Or more understanding, maybe? You know, I really don't know exactly why. I think, you know, the Scandinavian okay. countries have a fabulous history of um, more social equality for many reasons, right? Many reasons. Um, so they're very much on top of it. It's a very open discussion. They're, it's, um, you know, I don't find that their people work in such silos as I find here in the States. Um, again, I'm getting fabulous engagement mm -hmm. and it takes time. You know, it's very hard, you know, to be the new person on the scene. People are always, you know, giving you the side. I like, who is this person and what is she doing? Right. And what does she want with me? Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm making traction, which is fantastic. Um, but really I found that the engagement has come quite a lot from the UK, um, from the UK and from Iceland and from, from Scandinavian countries. So slowly but surely I'm, I'm making headway in the States. A little by little for sure. A little, and, yeah. And the, is that a logo of anything in particular? It's the, it's the Icelandic brand. Yeah. Icelandic. Oh, yeah. okay. And okay. I like the hat. I thought it was cool. That's and cool. it's quite subtle. <laughs> it, uh, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. So since you mentioned you and your um, daughter are the co-founders mm -hmm. and pre-podcast you told me she's in london yes. right so yeah you have you have an office there right <laughs> yes <laughs> but um how do you guys divide the work what are you guys doing so she is such a straight shooter and no drama I mean, she's always been like this right nothing is an issue and she's 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 a great thinker so when things come up and I want to bounce ideas. She's a she's an amazing sounding board, um, and comes up with phenomenal solutions. I think. I mean, I'd like to think she got the problem solving for me. Um, although, well, her dad's a very good problem solver too. Absolutely. Um, so she now, because she's working in London, she takes more of a not really a consulting role, but I bounce. You know, everything that we do and move forward with. Um, you know, including I was very excited about being on the podcast. So Super. called her and said, hey, L, you know, so okay. that was very exciting. Yeah. Um, so she's a great sounding board. The other thing that's that's um, really beneficial is we are two completely different generations. So we have different approaches and understandings of the world. So it's really nice to get that perspective and that balance because the the implications of gender bias of course are everywhere but how are 20 year olds 30 year olds 40 year olds 50 year olds 60 year olds perceiving this do they care do they think it's something is it important um so it's very it's really nice to have that completely different perspective yeah so it's great so that's that's her role i know i do everything else <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's it. great to be able to have the time to work with your daughter and yeah. stuff like that. I'm sure it's cool. It is. So where can we find you? Obviously online. Can you yes. tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So the website is right by me, W R I T E by me dot I O. And, you know, please visit the website, have a look around. It's much more than the text editor, but text editor, you can type in the text editor. You can copy paste. Um, and then you, it's quite intuitive about how it works. You'll see um, 
if there are any weaker ineffective words or phrases, they'll be identified and you'll have an explanation of why, why they're ineffective. And then you have the choice to either accept the suggestion or ignore it. Um, version one does not understand context. We do hope to move into uh, natural language processing and of course AI to be bigger, better, faster, stronger. But right now version one does not understand context. So if you see a suggestion that you know is, uh, might be correct in another context, but your context is correct, then you simply ignore our suggestion. Yeah. Uh, but please go and visit and take some time to, to read through it. It's really, um, it's got a lot of information. We, we have links out also. We have uh, highlights of just, you know, if you say, okay, well, I know that I've heard of this gender bias, but you know, tell me more about it. Lots of links to articles, publications, data. So um, yeah, take okay. some time, have a look around the website. Awesome. Well, I definitely recommend it for you guys to check it out, no, rightbyme.io. So I, I want to take a little break to thank 3G Tutoring for lending us their offices here so that we can do this podcast live. And, yes, thank uh, so, you. Thank you. So you're also doing other things. I have C's, right? Is, yes. Is your other project. Yes. So, and uh, My other passion project. <laughs> the other passion project. And, yes. And since I work you know, in, in, in at the county, we've talked about this, mm -hmm. how we can... How we're going to spread the word since it's it's a it helps people swim. So I'm going to let I'm going to let Karen tell us more about that. Yeah. So the program is called SEAS S E A S, and it stands for Swim, Explore, Act, and Surf. And I have to give you a quick background. So keep a skein connection, keep a skein background. Um, in August, uh, Christina Del Valle, who was a keep a skein resident, I had never met her before, posted in a chat group that she was looking for life jackets for kids. She works with a group called Motivational Edge and they were having a, a program, I, I believe at the Nature Center and the kids, oop, okay. and the kids um, didn't know how to swim. So I grew up, in, I was born in Miami. I grew up in Miami my entire life. I swam competitively. I played water polo competitively, scuba dive, water skiing. I've been kite surfing for 20 years. Everything in my world is really on, indoor, on in, under, over the water. So not knowing how to swim is not acceptable, you know, in my world. And I thought a life jacket takes care of a day, but learning to swim takes care of a life. So I messaged her and I said, can't help you with the life jackets, but I can help you with the swimming. So very quickly, I put together a program that is a path to opportunity and a path to advocacy that is part one is 16 weeks of swimming lessons. So it's much more than getting to the wall, right? This is actually being competent mm -hmm. and comfortable and learning how to swim, learning the strokes, learning how to swim. That's part one. Um, part two is a day on the beach with Surf Rider Foundation. And I do have to give the biggest shout out to Surf Rider because once I put this program together and I got the budget, um, I've been working alongside Surf Rider for about three or four years. Um, I started with the Key Biscayne Beach closures about three or four years ago with the water contamination. I thought, you know, sitting back and complaining is never going to move the needle. So I became involved in what the issues are and how to make it better. So um, I brought it to Surf Rider and they have agreed to fund the entirety of the program. So huge shout out, shout out to Surf Rider. Um, so the part two is a day on the beach, which is surfing lessons. So they're learning how to surf. And then after a nice lunch, there is a, um, a beach cleanup, which is what surf rider, one of the things surf rider does, but it's not just cleaning the beach, but it's understanding beach ecology and the marine environment. Where does the trash come from and why should I care? And how is it important? And how can I prevent it? And what's an, what are native uh, species versus non-native and why should I care about dune restoration? So it's really explaining the importance and, and hopefully getting them to care, right? So, and then to become advocates for, for clean water and healthy beaches. Part three for cohort number one is a day in the bay with Pelican Harbor Seabird Station. But they're, I they're cool. love Pelican Harbor Seabird Station. I remember I took my kids there when they were only helping pelicans out on 79th Street when it was the little shack of a place. It was just, they, they've, they have grown so much and they do such amazing work. So my eldest son and I did, did a sunset cruise with Pelican Harbor. And I was like, 
this should be part three of my C's program. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, my passion also is, is uh, Biscayne Bay water quality. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, I am so happy to be engaging with, with Waterkeeper, with Save the Manatees, with Debris Free Oceans, with Clean This Beach Up, with We Tear, right? With VolunteerCleanup.org, with anyone and everyone, with Manny from Philibag, right? Keep a skein, who's done an amazing job. Um, to really work with everyone in trying to make this better. So how can we make it how can we make it better? We have to get people to care, right? So the Seas program, I brought to Surfrider, they said they're gonna fund it. I went back to Christina. I said, let's do this. She has been an amazing liaison with Motivational Edge. Um, we have uh, we are now uh, in the second of the eight weeks of swimming. And now, so I go to every swimming class. When I'm in town, I go to every Saturday swimming class. Um, the swimming classes are held at Range Pool in the city of Miami. So I've been working with city of Miami and hopefully I'll get to work with the county too and expanding this program. It's amazing. It, we've had zero attrition. Every single child that began this program is still in it. And as I was speaking with the parents on Saturday mornings while the kids were in the pool, I realized the parents didn't know how to swim. Well, we needed the parents' engagement. Not only that, but could you imagine someone falls in the pool? Potentially two tragedies, right? If the parent falls, jumps in, and, but doesn't know how to swim. And just you know. because of the fear, I guess, and concern, he just wants to try to save the child. And right. He doesn't know how to swim. Exactly. Both Correct. Exactly. Wow. So I'm really proud that um, just yesterday we started classes for the parents too. So we have 11 kids. Right now we have 11 kids learning to swim. They are, uh, they just finished their ninth of 16 swimming classes and the parents are learning to swim as well. Um, and it's phenomenal. And I get asked all the time, how can, how can my kid, how can my kid join this? You know, what the, people ask, they see the groups, they ask me when I'm sitting by the pool. Um, so I'm so proud of it and I'm so excited. And this can be life changing for so many people, um, f beyond knowing how to save a life or saving yourself or, you know, in the pool. This opens up opportunities for education, for employment, um, for study. You know, um, Surfrider Foundation has a, a, a phenomenal program called Blue Water Task Force. They test water weekly, w bacteria levels, understanding that. So there's science. Miami Waterkeeper has phenomenal programs. Um, Thousand Eyes on the Water. They have teen ambassador programs. So this is a really wonderful way for so many people to... Uh, be introduced to to opportunities that perhaps they didn't even know existed. So I'm really excited about it, and um, it's very scalable. So I'm excited to scale this. I like that the safety, of course, is number one, mm -hmm. but the jobs yeah. is also very interesting to me because I, I didn't know, for example, that when I was working at the city of Miami, the, the director in charge of the department of providing these kind of skill services, he's like, we have jobs at the port, mm -hmm. but we people don't know how to swim in, right. in the city of Miami, so they can't get the jobs. And to me, it was like, I grew up, I knew how to swim. Right. I just didn't, I didn't go beyond thinking like, there's people out there don't know how to swim, they can't get the jobs, or at least they're missing a certain set of opportunities. Yeah, we don't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, also, uh, oh, no, let's go back. Um, another thing I want to say is like, it's great that you are engaged in this way because, you know, being in government for so, for so long is that people sometimes bring the issues mm. and, and, and which is great. And we're here to provide the issues, but what you do is you're engaged. Mm -hmm. You, you, you have an issue, you use the power of your energy and your network. <laughs> and, and, and if you don't have it, you go out and look for it. Right. And you put the time, which is great because you can do things and it, you could, sometimes you can expand the abilities of, of local organizations and, mm -hmm. and government and all work together to find solutions to problems. So, yeah. And I, so I, thank I, you for being an engaged resident. You know what? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> <laughs> for being a stubborn engaged. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I think that's my, my superpower is I'm resourceful and I'm a problem solver. You know, I saw this issue and I was like, I could fix that. So I did. And I'm on my way. And um, I do have to give a big shout out to Greg Clark from Good Miami. He does pro bono photography for oh. nonprofits who want to tell their story. And I was at um, the Waterkeeper State of the Water event, and I just 
I, I had no idea. I didn't know about this. And I heard Rachel mention, you know, thank him. And I was like, wait, who's this? What's this? So anyway, so he came out yesterday, started shooting the program so we could help tell the story. Um, and he said, wow, this program is great. It's so valuable. I want to make connections for you. So it's really phenomenal to see how, you know, how people want to see this program succeed. Um, so that was, you know, very exciting, very exciting. So I will say, um, I can't do this by myself anymore. So if anyone out there is listening, is interested in, in participating and, you know, and helping um, the program grow uh, and go beyond, you know, parts one, two, and three, we want people, we want families and children to stay engaged and to explore opportunities and to, you know, to be advocates for our community and for healthy water and for clean water. So anyone out there, please contact me. So how can volunteers reach out then to be part of this amazing project? So I just started our Instagram page. It's uh, all caps, C's, S-E-A-S underscore Miami on Instagram. And um, yeah, you you can follow the story, follow the the uh, the students follow the swimming and the surfing and the beaches and the and the seabird cruise and please reach out to me on Instagram um, if you have any questions or you know if you'd like to if you'd like to chat I'm open to any and all conversation. I'll put that information in the show notes so people can uh, have access to that. Thank you. I want to ask you what about feedback? I mean, this is your second cohort, right? Or for yes. for the kids and then now the first parents. Mm -hmm. So what is that feedback you've been getting from the kids, the parents? Wow. So. When I tell you it's outstanding, I'm beyond thrilled with, with how this program is being received. Um, it's so important. And wow, so actually Christina told me this. She was speaking with um, one of the mothers at uh, Motivational Edge. And she was so excited. She's in the swimming program. She's learning how to swim. She was so excited and really so grateful for this opportunity. She said to Christina, now my family will be a swimming family. So she has a three-year-old daughter. I'm going to teach my three-year-old how to swim. And now we will be a swimming family. And that was like, gave me goosebumps, you know, like, wow, look at all the things they, even if it's just going to enjoy the beach and not being afraid. Um, so that was great. So it's being so well received. Um, I have been speaking with the um, Belafonte Tecolsi Center in Liberty City about starting a group for them. So, um, Shonda there, she's the CEO. She's been great. So speaking with her and hopefully we get them to be the next cohort. Um, and through Greg's introductions, you know, we have some other, other groups interested, but, um, yeah, this is extremely scalable. So I look forward to being able to provide this program, um, to as many, to as many groups and as many people and, and families as possible. Awesome. Congratulations. Seems Thank like you. everything you do grows. So from your, it, it, God willing, God isn't there willing, a saying that the don't rise? <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I'm also pretty stubborn about that. So, you know, I just keep going, you know, it's a, you only have to, you only have to be right once. So hopefully now this is twice, right? Hopefully with, you know, right by me and, and sees, um, and it's wonderful. And it's, uh, I, I, I'm so fortunate. I, I just, I love what I do and, and I'm doing it for the, you know, for, for right reasons. And hopefully it'll make, make the world a better place. It sounds so cliched, but no, uh, awesome. that's at least my, at least our world here in South Florida awesome. for, with the seas program. Yeah. So you mentioned, you mentioned that for seas is we learn how to swim, mm -hmm. we learn how to surf, and then there's the seabird cruise. Yes. What comes after that? Wow. Thank, thanks for that. That was actually a great question. So, um, I don't want this to end with part three, they've done this amazing program. So what's next? We want to keep opportunities open and we want to keep kids and families engaged. So how do we do that? So I am planning an event that brings together people, organizations, interests in the community that provide um, opportunities for engagement, for advocacy, for healthy, you know, healthy beaches, clean water environment. So the different organizations I had mentioned before, I invite anyone with any interest who does anything for clean water, healthy beaches, the manatees, you know, any environment, even if it's in the Everglades, right? Um, to present these opportunities to the kids, the families and the communities so that we can get, keep them engaged. You know, perhaps there's a rising social media star, right? Who mm -hmm. says, wow, you know what? 
this resonates with me. I'm, pas I'm passionate about this, whatever that happens to be. So he or she or they become involved with that, you know, with that organization. Um, maybe it's, you know, I've seen people paddleboard and I always wanted to, but I didn't know how to swim. And now I know how to swim. And I've been introduced to this amazing marine environment. I want to start paddleboarding, even if it's just for leisure, but you, you become engaged and you care. Um, there's so many levels to keeping our environment healthy and clean from, you know, the science, the leisure, the education, even backing it way up to public works. You know, how can public works help us have cleaner streets and, and, and cleaner and healthier Biscayne Bay? So, so many opportunities. So this event will bring so many people together to show the opportunities that are available for all kinds of engagement. Well, I look forward to see what you yeah. make out of out of season. If it is only your, only... I know it's a little too big. It's lofty, but no, why not? Awesome. Right? I love it. Dream big. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So we have a couple of closing questions here in Kibis Kane stories. Thank you so much, by the way, of everything you've this shared. This has been this such is, a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Talk about seas here and and right um right by me. But uh, keep skin related. Mm. Everything has been keep skin related because this is technically a keep skin startup. Right. There, right. Exactly. Yes. Right, right for... uh, 100%. Absolutely. Both. Both. Yeah. Both initiatives. So yeah. what is what is a good, I mean, I guess, what's a perfect weekend for you and your family here in the Key? Oh, my goodness. Wow. I love not having to drive. Amen. I love not having to drive. I can walk or ride my bike anywhere which is a blessing, you know? And I know for my kids, by the way, growing up, my, my kids, I have to say, once they became older teens, they, they actually thanked us for raising them here in Key Biscayne. That's how special it is. Um, they just, you know, you grew up here, it's what you know, why should, everybody lives like this. And then they really understood the value mm. of, you know, of, of, of growing up, of growing up here and, and the Key Biscayne community. So, wow. Um, visiting Bill Bags. I love Bill Bags. Visiting Bill Bags, walking on the beach at low tide, um, and going out to eat. You know, we have so many great restaurants. I love just enjoying the atmosphere. You always run into people you know. Mm. You know, I joke around. I say, you can't just say I'm going out for five minutes. It doesn't work here. <laughs> I agree. You know, which is great. So, um, yeah, not having to drive. Bill, visiting, visiting Bill Bags, going to the beach, and... Um, and going out to eat. I love it. You're yep. right. You're right. You yep. can go out and uh, not stumble upon someone you know. All right. And when I have my have my cousins visit from Peru um, a long time ago to get vaccinated during the whole, mm. you know, the, after the pandemic, um, they were like, "What's going on?" It's like, "Why are you saying hello <laughs> to so many people?" It's just I just know a lot of people. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's great. And actually, some very close friends of mine from Brazil who come frequently, they love it here. Like they're like. So now they have very young children. So when their children are starting to grow up, they're like, oh, maybe we can spend more time here. So it's really nice. And I love introducing Key Biscayne to, to friends from other parts of the country and from, from outside the country. Awesome. Yeah. Karen, thank you so much for jumping on the show and telling us your story and what you're up to with these projects. And amazing. And I, I wish you the best. And I, I, thank you. I like I said it before, I want to see what you do with these in a couple of years. I want to say a couple of months because uh, you go fast. Uh, yes. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. This has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much.